Hey guys, I'm Saurav. Welcome to the channel. Today in this video, I will be talking about the process of creating cinematic images. This video will be divided into two different parts. This is part one, where I talk about the process of taking the pictures. In part two, I will be talking about the editing process to create the final finished product. Once part two is live, I will add the link in the description right below the like button. I'm 100% sure that we will learn a lot of things and we will have a lot of fun. Super excited. So without wasting any time, let's get started. Number one tip, hack or advice, anything you want to call it is shooting in bad weather. Write this down somewhere. I'm serious. Bad weather equals good photos. Whenever it is raining, snowing or it is foggy outside, it is your best chance to create cinematic images. Reason being, the light is passing through a medium. It can be some kind of fog, water droplets, snow, anything. And that is known as volumetric lighting. When the light is interacting with the atmosphere, it is a super important tool to add depth and atmosphere in your images and add to the cinematic feel of it. Now I use the word depth, which is a super important word for this video. And by depth, I don't mean only depth of field. There are different ways of adding depth to your images. One of my favorite technique to add depth is shooting backlit. Now, what is backlit? Basically, the light source is present behind the subject and it is facing the camera. This helps in separating the subject from the background and, you guessed it right, creates depth in your images. One important factor while shooting backlit is the exposure. If the light source that is facing the camera is important, make sure you don't overexpose it. I tend to shoot two third or one stop darker. If the shadows are a bit darker, I can always recover them later in post. My favorite time of the day to shoot is during sunset, the golden hour and after sunset, the blue hour. The reason I love shooting during the golden hour is because the light starts getting softer. And as you transition to the blue hour, the street lights turn on, which is slightly warmer, but you still have that ambient light that has blue tones in it. And when you combine these blue tones with the warmer colors, you're creating a very unique color palette with a lot of contrast that looks very cinematic. If you see these images carefully, you will notice that there is a soft glow to it. And this is not done in post. It's all captured in camera using the Nissi black mist filter. I have made a separate video about the black mist filter before. Basically, what this filter does is it reduces the contrast, makes the highlights a bit less harsh and gives that soft, dreamy look. Right now, this video is being shot using the black mist filter. This filter comes in three different variations, 1x2, 1x4 and 1x8. 1x2 is the most powerful one followed by the 1x4 and 1x8. I have been using these filters for over a year and honestly, I always carry these in my camera bag and I'm not saying just because Nissi is sponsoring this video. It's compact. If I want to carry the whole set of three, I have a small pouch. It's very convenient, very easy to use and I would 100% recommend you to try it out. Link in the description below. Talking about camera settings, I stick to two camera modes. One is aperture priority and the second is manual mode. If there is plenty of light and shutter speed is not an issue, I like to keep things simple and use aperture priority. If I'm shooting in low light, I will always use manual mode. There are two things that affects the depth of field. One is the aperture and second is the focal length you're shooting at. Let's say you're using the same aperture, but you're shooting at a wider focal length and a tighter focal length. The one with the tighter focal length will have more shallow depth of field and will give you more background compression. But that doesn't mean you should always shoot at tighter focal lengths. When it comes to focal length, it should be decided on the look you're going for because every focal length has a different look to it and not on the depth of field. Remember, depth of field is not everything. Cinematic image is a combination of something that looks visually appealing but also has a narrative behind it. A very easy technique to add interest in your frame is to add a subject. Make the audience draw towards the subject in the frame. 
the audience should connect with the subject in the image, should be curious, should be interested in what's going on in the image. And if you want the audience to be drawn towards the subject, you need a good composition. When I'm watching movies, I pay close attention to how are the scenes composed, how is the lighting done, where are the subjects framed. Doing this on a regular basis will help you to develop a vision and improve your composition skills. The idea is to use a simple composition. How I go about composition is, I pay attention to the surroundings. If it is helping me to tell the story, I will include more of it. If the surrounding is distracting like the leaves right now in front of my face, then I'll get a tighter composition and focus more on the subject. It all depends upon the story. Generally, the movies we watch are shot at the aspect ratio of around 2 is to 1. And I love shooting super wide images. I don't know what it is about the super wide aspect ratio, but it looks super cinematic. If you want to shoot a super wide image, you might not be able to do it in camera because your camera might not allow you to shoot in that aspect ratio. So you have to adjust the crop later in post. Make sure you have enough information in the horizontal direction and you don't include anything important in the top or the bottom part of the image since they are going to get cropped out. As I said at the beginning of the video, this is part one. In part two, I'll be talking more about the editing process. I'll be talking about color grading. I'll be talking about how do you give the image a moody vibe. But before that, it's important to understand that the photography process is super important. Getting the images right in camera should always be your priority. You just can't take any random image, throw a random filter and boom, you have a cinematic image. That's not how it works. One of the things that has helped me develop my style is to follow photographers who have a similar kind of interest, similar kind of style. Then I pay close attention to their work. What are they doing on field and off field to produce the results they are able to? When you do this on a regular basis, what you are essentially doing is you are picking up the good things from different photographers, inculcating them in your own style and developing your style. This is one of the easiest and effective ways to grow as a photographer. That's it from this video guys. Thank you for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. I loved making the video and part 2 is going to come soon. Link will be in the description once it's uploaded. Thank you Nisi for sponsoring this video and supporting the channel. And if you like the video, press the like button, comment on the video, subscribe to the channel. Let's reach 1 million as soon as possible. I'll talk to you guys in the next one. Bye.